Alright, so I have the same book as Meredith, The Curious Incident of a Dog in the High Time. Uh, so basically, when I like thought about the paper and I thought about this presentation, and when I thought about reading the book, I had a goal. And so my goal was to recognize and understand the underlying social commentary of the book. That was just plain and simple how I was going to do it. So what I did first is I said, how am I going to do this with this book? So after kind of just being introduced to the book and researching it before actually reading it, I developed like a three like point strategy. So the first strategy involves like uh, analyzing Christopher from two perspectives. Uh, a diagnostic perspective so I can diagnose him with like the actual disorders he has to look at him scientifically and look how he like how he sees the world through that perspective and then also look at him from a neurotypical perspective which means um, looking at him in the same light that like this like I function or you function or we all function and then the third point was to interpret and anal interpret the anal analysis to understand the underlying social commentary <coughs> so diagnosing Christopher uh, my first point in diagnosing Christopher is his lack of empathy uh, the point with Asperger's is the, is the fact that there's actually two types of empathy, cognitive and affective. Cognitive empathy is the ability to like realize that people are feeling a certain way. Like you actually realize that they have feelings, and then affective empathy is understanding why they have those feelings. Uh, essentially, so Asperger's, people with, who suffer from Asperger's syndromes lack um, affective empathy, so they don't understand why people feel a certain way. They understand that people have feelings, but they can't understand why. And so that just creates a disconnect from people in the world and people with Asperger's. And you can see that in the book throughout many different examples. And I listed a lot of different examples in my paper, but I didn't want to bore you with it in here. Um, so my second point is kind of, kind of interesting. And the only reason I mention it is because um, the way the book was written. So Mark Haddon is a, a normal neurotypical person, and he didn't do a lot of research on Asperger's syndrome before. Um, so the reason I mention this is because uh, the hypermale hypothesis is uh, it's a hypothesis that was introduced by Hans Asperger, the person who founded, or like not founded, but the namesake for Asperger's syndrome. Um, he proposed that autism is like an extreme of the male mind. And so basically my paper, I kind of backed this up and I looked at a lot of studies that are actually pretty recent that show like, oh, on average, like male infants will stare longer at um, mechanical objects than females. Females will stare longer at uh, like uh, faces, showing, you know, like uh, correlation between patterns and then empathy, you know, uh, female inf infants would be more focused on like the empathetic play styles, like playing with dolls and stuff. And uh, male infant, male toddlers would be more interested in playing with mechanical toys or like Legos and stuff. And they do that more on average than girls would. <laughs> and so, how I tied this in is I said, Mark Haddon is kind of just exploring his own mind and writing it as Christopher. He's becoming Christopher, and he's kind of just taking his own self to a, a different degree and he's looking at things from a different perspective and so the third point is uh, Christopher has genius level skills and he has an uh, amazing ability to recognize patterns uh, and so I didn't necessarily like um, pair this with the Asperger's syndrome I paired this with a different syndrome called savant syndrome which basically is another developmental disorder that gives um, whoever is happening to uh, like genius level skills in certain areas and uh, great abilities to recognize patterns, numbers, and work with numbers. And, and Christopher has like displays this throughout the whole book. He's from the beginning of the book to the end of the book. He's working on this test. Um, he's preparing for this test that he's trying to take so he can pass. And it's like uh, like many grade levels above what uh, his actual grade level is. Uh, so my fourth point was uh, Christopher's reaction to major stressors. So Christopher, whenever he's um, introduced with like big stressors in his life, so it's kind of a spoiler, sorry, but so Christopher thinks his mother's dead, but then he later finds out his mother's not dead. She's actually just ran away with another dude. Um, so when he finds this out, he kind of freaks out and he loses control of himself. And this, this isn't like the only instance where this happens. There's little things where he gets lost in a train station. He starts freaking out. Um, and these freakouts, they're referred to as like by like autismspeaks.org as meltdowns, and so basically what happens is they 
they're introduced to all these stressors and they don't know what to do, so they just start losing control of their own like mind and body, and they just kind of like give up. And a lot of the time in the book, Christopher describes blacking out. And so what what happens with the blacking out is that it's like the brain's response to embarrassment. Because every time Christopher would like say in the book, he'd have these meltdowns and then he'd black out and he'd say, I just know I felt super embarrassed after it, but I don't know what I did. <clears throat> so looking at Christopher from a neurotypical perspective, I didn't really have much to like write down in here because it would all be like way too much and uh, like just way too boring. But basically in my paper what I did is I, I kind of just looked in like, I, I related myself to Christopher and tried to learn from him, learn from, about myself from him because when I was looking at interviews with Mark Haddon, that's Mark Haddon, um, he, was, he said this something, he said something in an interview about the book. He said, if you're, re if you're reading a book about someone with Asperger's, you're learning about yourself. And so this is kind of where I started to like see what Haddon was trying to say with the book. Uh, and here I kind of just like looked at his interactions with people, like neurotypical people like his mom and dad, and I looked at him like as if he were a neurotypical. <laughs> and I realized that like um, the differences that he has actually allow him to like communicate better with other people rather than hindering him. Like sometimes if he, if he uses the correct um, if, like, if, he, if he uses the correct strategies that were given to him in the book by this, like, I don't know if it's like a, like a, I don't know what it's called, but he has like a helper in the book because he, he suffers from Asperger's syndrome, so he has like, his parents have hired someone to help him out. And if he uses those strategies to talk to people and communicate with people, he actually has a better time than doing it than like we would have doing it. <clears throat> so understanding Haddon's message. So I kind of just put one thing here. And this is just my title of the paper. It's The Polarizing Nature of Unity. And so what I kind of got from this is like, in order to understand and unify us all as a community or a society or whatever it may be, whatever you know, like group it is that you're unifying, um, I think it's essential to like not look at all the similarities and more focus on the differences and embrace those differences. Because in all of Christopher's conflict throughout the book, it's all because people uh, viewed him differently and didn't like necessarily embrace those differences, and 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 they looked at those differences as as all like retractions from his personality, no matter what it was. They didn't ever look at the good side of it, and the and so that's kind of like the polarizing nature of unity is like uh, like the similar similarities and differences. They're kind of just batting over, batting against each other, but what overall unifies us all together is that we're all different, not that we're all similar. Okay. That's it.